sometimes I'll just lay out a white piece of paper and like get onto the paper just to be like put myself into the work that's um, beautiful and just um, actually put your body on the paper that's brilliant. yeah yeah because I feel like a lot of times when I'm in front of the canvas or in front of the camera um it I don't want to say it's like a mirror but it's it's like a a portal or it's it's like a space that um you know reflects a little more of what's going on than what I might actually visually see. Welcome to Inside Art Podcast, where you will get to see through the eyes of artists who transform our understanding of the world. Join me for this personal investigation of the artist's relationship to inspiration, art making, and flow. Welcome to Inside Art Podcast. In this episode, I speak with Millie Benson in Brooklyn, and she shares her studio practice with us as we look at some work that she's made recently using her body, using collage, photography, and painting. And I feel like this conversation is about the in-between space, a space of not knowing, or maybe transmuting an experience that quite challenged us, but allows us to transform into something else. So I hope you enjoy. The following is a video clip from this episode. Yes, so that's the first one on paper. And then the second one is the, um, is the clay. And then um, there's one of just the leaves, the third one down. And then I started, like, I started thinking about, um, started thinking about how different everything is. And people were saying things like, oh, before times, like before the pandemic. Um, and I had these, I have all these old clothes in my space. So I had this dress um, and I, I just felt like this dress was from when I was so young and um, just totally different body, totally different time period. And I just like, kind of was like, I want to go back, but I really can't. And this whole thing is like changed the world. And so I was like thinking about that. Um, and just sort of like trying to reach back and then realizing like, well, you can never reach back. So, and then this is just, um, I have these tables that I just lay all this stuff out on. So there were like leaves and shells and bird feathers. It's all found stuff. None of it is purchased. Um, and there's some, per I was really, um, during the pandemic, we took a trip, we went to Montauk and we went to that beach that has the purple sand. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's called Ditch Plains and it was dead of winter. Um, and we went to Ditch Plains and I was standing there. It was around Valentine's day actually. Um, and I was standing there and I, all of a sudden I looked around, I realized the whole beach was purple and it blew my mind. It completely blew my mind. Um, so I spent the next three days like photographing this purple sand. Um, and all the images are up on my Instagram. Um, yeah. But okay. so in this picture, there's this all this purple sand. Um, I, I brought some back in these little shells because I wanted to um, put it in a painting. So these were just like all the things that I was <laughs> thinking about. Um, and they're that? all. Now that I'm looking at the picture, there's um, there's really weird stuff on there. Like we went, we did all this weird stuff during the pandemic. We went to the New Is York. Is that the Botanic purple sand, Museum. by the way? This picture. Yeah. Um, no. uh, yes. Yes. Right there. The the yeah the one that has like the big like the, yeah yeah that's, that's the purple crazy. sand. I mean, that's, look at that. That's crazy. It's that's crazy. crazy. It's crazy and I don't know if it was more purple maybe there's just more of that mineral I I later read about um you know you can find people who th there's like reports on the sand there and there's a mineral that causes the purple 
Um, and so I don't know if maybe it was because it was winter and the tide had brought in purple and then it was mixed with the snow that made it uh, lighter, but it just, it was just so striking. And um, I really, really wanted to, we were with these friends, they're pretty good friends. I, I really wanted to um, just like dig a hole and get in the sand, <laughs> but it was so cold. It was really, really cold. Um, and I couldn't figure out like how I would photograph that. So I just, um, I took all these pictures and I just tried to like be, be in it. Um, yeah. and I, I had on a snowsuit and I had on these big, tall, like snow slash water boots. So for these pictures, I, I was able to walk pretty far out into the water actually. Um, wow. and That's just cool. kind of like be standing in this purple Ugh. world That's and it was so just, it was just so it just it was such a gift to be able to um just see it really yeah you know the patterns and um yeah, yeah so it reminds I, me of the work that you did in your studio afterwards it's sort of like the impression the memories the physical sort of little trails of presence you know, yeah and it's things that have washed away what's left these little artifacts yeah and I think the other thing about it that um is always so interesting to me is that when you're actually in it it's constantly changing and um I don't even know if if it would have been a different day or if I would have been in a different mood or a different time of the day I might not even have noticed it mm -hmm. um so I think that's interesting too, that it just came, you know, all of a sudden it, I mean, we had been there for a while. I don't know what it was that clicked, but I just was like, whoa, this is all purple. Um, yeah, so it, it, it definitely, um, I, I paint with uh, acrylic inks. And um, so I came back from that trip and I, I, I researched the color purple and I bought all these different purple pigments and um, just like got into the history of the color purple. Um, and then, so in the studio, uh, in my studio, this next picture, I would just say that maybe that was the darkest point was the Montauk and the purple sand and the coming back from Boston. And I, I don't know, it just felt very, but the sun kept flooding in here. Um, and so I took some pictures. Uh, I started doing some collage work during the pandemic. We were traveling and I was with the kids and we kept cutting out these pictures, these little pictures of ghosts, like little shapes that looked like ghosts. My aunt calls them haints, I think, um, or haunts, haints, they call them in the South, but um, just when something looks like a little ghost. So I started cut, like I felt like then I started seeing them everywhere. So I started collaging and I was like hanging them on the wall and the sun was coming in. Um, and here's just one of me it, back there lur lurking in the, that corner yeah. of the studio. But, I just want um, to pause for a second on that one with you in the chair and the sun. Yeah. So the camera is above you and looking down on your naked body sitting in a chair, but the artwork is behind you on the wall. And it's it's a really beautiful image. It's very stunning and it it definitely feels sad, <laughs> but it also has that intensity of the sun. And I think it's so interesting what you're talking about, like the these cutout paper things on the wall have this absence to them. It makes perfect sense what you're processing. And then if you go back to like all these artifacts that you've collected, the leaves, the rocks, the stones, and like, it's like the body trying to make sense of the environment and the environment informing like your, your processing of all this grief. And you're in an in-between phase too, because at that point in time, the pandemic was starting to shift. And it's like, it was so hard to be locked up and lose so many people. And then to come back to life, there's this disjointed in-between time. 
where you're like, very how do you go back to just making art? Like you don't go back to who you were. You yeah. definitely are someone else, but like, I feel like it, what I get from these images is this intense feeling of like questioning all reality, meaning and, and like impetus, like what makes you want to make art in the right. midst of difficulty. And even when it gets better, you're, you know, we, we, in our cellular memory, in our, we hold on to trauma. Yeah. And well, it's, it's it like can't just book. go away without some kind of process or recognition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's what I get. It reminds me of the book, The Body Keeps the Score, which uh -huh. I started reading over the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic. But um, I've actually done a lot of work around that kind of stuff. And so um, every year, the the next picture, the one of me, um, of the, just like the studio, um, Every year at the beginning of the year, I do a body tracing of myself. Um, and usually I'll have some friends over and we'll trace each other's bodies. So it's kind of hard to see, but right there is my tracing of me mm -hmm. in the middle. And then to the right are the leaves. Um, and so we traced our bodies um, at the beginning of the year. And um, I, I had a, a very old tracing of my body that I did when I was 21 wow. in the desert in Arizona. And I traced my body and then I collaged into my body, um, like into different parts of my body. I made this collage. And when I moved into this studio space, I found that collage, that tracing. Mm -hmm. What I did, I don't know why, but I just had to do this. I had this like couch bed thing that, um, that I have in here that I use. It's like a day bed sort of couch. Um, I laid the tracing on there and I left myself on the couch to watch the sky when I'm not in the studio oh, cool. and I just, I just felt like I had this I had this body tracing and I just I felt like hey I want to see the sky you know even when I'm not in there so like maybe this is you know so every year I do one that's um, really beautiful it makes me think about you're working with these in-betweens like between time and between life and death and you know the between the material and your experience of the material like if you're not there but your tracing is there are you still experiencing it energetically it's really cool right. yeah yeah because that's something i think i think um i think about a lot as an artist um you know when i spend so much time standing in front of something and you know, having this conversation with it, is it then a portal? Is it, you know, what is, what is it? Um, I, I think it is, but yeah. it's hard to describe yeah. portals because, you know, they, you can, in you can put your stuff in it, but you can also receive from it. And I think right. as an yeah. artist, you're doing so many things at the same time. Like you're the viewer, you're the creator, you're the meditator, you're the, yeah. The, you're creating out of your body memory. Thank you for listening to this episode of Inside Art Podcast. You can connect with me at sarahroster.com or at Inside Art Podcast on Instagram.